Welcome to episode 97 of Broad Street Hustles. Today we have a little bit of a different show than normal. We're going to be covering the Players' Championship. Back to Goff in anticipation of the Masters in just uh, under a month or so, or about a month, uh, we're doing the Players. But we are going to discuss some uh, free agency, specifically the Eagles, but maybe around the league quickly. We, uh, we should have the time. Let's go around. I got uh, Jason Sayetta. Hey, Tom. Hello, I am your host, Tommy Nanny. I don't know if I said that. We got Jimmy the Chalk. The Jeremy Roenick edition. Yeah, so it's just we just have uh, a short crew here. Our other golf guy could not make it, Kevin. He will be on for the Masters, but he will not make the PGA. Uh, but that's good. It's good practice for us. We're going to do a draft like we have done if you've listened to prior shows. Uh, same format where we get six guys. Uh, you get to cut one guy, so your worst player. If your guy misses the cut, if you get two guys that miss the cut, you're in a little bit of trouble. Um, and it's cumulative score. So always fun for us to track. Um, kind of gives us a gateway on guys we may or may not like. Um, but let's get into that after we cover Eagles free agency and free agency in general. So the Eagles made a couple big moves, I would say. Um, a little a- out of characteristic moves. Um, the cap did go up, so it could be why. But they got uh, Barkley, Saquon Barkley, for a modest number when it when it comes to caps, you know, hit this year and overall. Um, they got, uh, what's that guy's name? Huff? What's his first name? Brandon? Bryce. Bryce Huff. Maybe the best Bryce in the city. They got uh, Bryce Huff um, as a DN. Could he be replacing, uh, you know, two of the DNs and Sweat and um, Reddick? And they also got Parker, Avante Parker, which not a bad third edition. And uh, there's a guy I'm missing. Oh, CJ Gardner Johnson um, coming and back. Little- Linebacker for the Saints. Um, oh, the special kind of a special special, teamer. special yeah. teams ace, yeah. Yeah, nice sub player, special teamer. Signed Dickinson, you know, resigned a couple of their guys. But Jason, kick it off. Um, what did you think of the, the free agency for the Eagles so far? Uh, I mean, you know me with running backs. Like, I'm not not huge on running backs. I mean, is Barkley an upgrade from Swift? Yeah. Is he a huge upgrade from Swift? I don't know how how much he would be. Um, I think the blocking. The blocking is, over va- is a valid um, point, for sure. Um, but he's got to stay healthy, which he's had an issue with. Um, I don't know. You know, again, I think it's an upgrade. I I'm, I wouldn't go crazy over it because I'm just I'm just of that mindset with running backs. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say is, that, and I'm I feel the same way. But there does seem to be a tad bit of a shift in the league over the last. I mean, last year specifically, where the teams are going back to, you know, a, a, Detroit had a lot of success with run, well, with that dual running backs and running the ball. Obviously, San Francisco is a perfect example. I mean, I think a lot of it is uh, the short passing game, which everybody has now. So, you know, running back is important in that. So, um, you know, Barkley is, you know, somebody who could catch the ball out of the backfield. So, um I mean, yeah. I mean, if he has the same impact that McCaffrey has, of course, it's 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 a huge upgrade. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, you know. My my thing is, I think it's an upgrade, but I think it's going a little overboard just because of the name to say it's like a huge big upgrade. Um, definitely, Huff was a great move bringing him in. Um, he's he's definitely going to help the pass rush, and like you said, one of those guys is gone, either Sweat or Reddick. Probably sweat. I would think is going. Yeah, they were um, talking about just cutting sweat basically for nothing at this point. It cut, if they're not able to work something out. Yeah, I think he's gone. Um, and he was a non-factor in the second half of the year. I mean, my, he went like half of the season without a sack. Um, I, I don't like Parker. If Parker's your number three receiver, I don't like it. If they're just bringing him in to be a receiver, like a four or five, it's fine. But I, I. I think every year they neglect the number three receiver position. And um, I don't know if he's doing it again with this guy. I mean, if you look at, like, his his stats, like his, like, advanced stats with uh, – I know um, that guy Sharp was saying, like, he's, like, been dead last in the league and creating separation for – Years now, four he's years. He's got in a row. size, though, right? So when I mean, he could potentially be a red zone type guy. More so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I again, I think if he's a four or five, it's fine. If he's your number three, I don't, I don't like that. Um, 
Gardner's fine. I'm, I think they wanted the guy that the Packers got. I think he was their number one choice, right? That uh, safety McKinney. So that's pretty, you know, Gardner Johnson was probably their second choice there. That's fine. Um, you know, there's still holes they got to fill. Um, I'm probably not done yet. He's probably. Yeah, for, I mean, free agency in a vacuum is, is, you can say, but it's hard because there's still the draft. There's, the, you know, the, so yeah. it's. It's not final, like you said. So now, if this no, was it, then still, it's different. Yeah, no, you could you could still make trades and all too. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean, if you ask me to give a grade, I, I'd say B, just because um, you know I'm not going to go overboard with. Uh, I don't like Parker. Um, Barkley, I like. I just don't think it's as big of an upgrade as everybody thinks. Um, I like Huff for sure. Um, Johnson. I mean, between a B and a B plus, say that. Yeah, the only thing I'll say with Barkley though, and and maybe maybe not true, is you know you go into a game plan if you're the defense and you're like, we got Hurts, you got AJ Brown, whatever. You didn't really say like, we got what are we gonna do with Swift? You know, what they do this with. Yeah, Barkley, you might get that right. Like, oh, if yeah. they, you know, when Hurts is in that RPO, do we can't sell out as much on Hurts? I mean, it's all gonna come all gonna come down to Hurts, right? but it, yeah, ultimately. It but I think uh, one more thing I'll throw in is I think Kellen Moore might have had a lot to say about bringing Barkley in too. So, yeah, Chalky, your thoughts? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, you start hearing rumors every year before free agency starts, and some of them you think are just smoke. And I know Jason and I were talking with a couple people on Saturday, and I I thought the Barkley rumors were complete smoke screen. I just didn't see it happening, and uh, so slightly surprised to say the least to see it actually go down. The numbers, you know, I, I'm not big on paying backs a lot of money, um, but the way it's, you know, structured, it's going to be, what, 3.9 for the first year, and it's it's basically a two-year deal that they can get it's out like of there for year two. It's like a $5 million cap hit this year, which is Yeah, nothing. and, he'll, he's all, he, you know, if he plays all three years, he's still only going to be 29 at the end, so that's the, the shelf life of a running back in the league could be short, but it's not like they signed him at 34 uh, years old, so... I think it'll be, I, I mean, look, he was, you know, maybe the most exciting running back I've seen play college football in the last 10, 15 years. So it'll be interesting to see him. And, and if you look at some of the seasons, you know, he had two injury plague seasons, two, you know, all right seasons and two really good seasons with the Giants so far. I mean, he caught 90 balls his rookie year. I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be able to do that. But I mean, if you can get 60, you know, um, the McCaffrey comparisons are a little far-fetched from some people that i'm hearing but i mean he could be mccaffrey light maybe if that's what they're envisioning i i don't know I mean, but... the, thing, the other thing was swift also can catch the ball out of backfield they just neglected to even no try to yeah the ball. so, so no. I mean, that's coaching that's not and like... and that's i mean i don't know if that was well it was coaching for sure but you know the if you think back to the i mean really going back to andy reed uh, the, every coach since then has use those backs out of the backfield, you know, as a weapon. They wanted those dual threat backs, you know, Staley could catch certainly Westbrook, uh, Shady, um, and then even Sproles and and Clement coming in as as your second and third backs were guys that could do it. So it looks like they're going to go that way a little bit. And he's, I mean, this is really their first bellwether back they're going to have in the offense since McCoy because McCoy left and they brought in, you know, Murray and Matthews. And even though, um, Sanders was their primary back. They were using two and three backs pretty steadily in a rotation those years. So maybe he's going to get the majority of the carries. You know, I don't know. The uh, and being behind, he's never had a good, really good offense to play with. He came in at the end of Eli Manning's career and the Daniel Jones years, so he hasn't had a good quarterback. The lines have been atrocious. Now the Eagles line will not likely be a top three rushing line this year without Kelsey, and then whatever they're going to do um, at the guard spot. But if they're a top 10 it's still significantly better than what Barkley's had so we'll see how um we'll see how it gets worked in Parker I, I'm not really you know I, I don't hate the signing but I don't like it I mean he's only going to be a, a million dollar so cap hit because the Patriots are picking up most of his money um if there's going to be a coordinator that can work with him I guess you would want him to play with more because more finds ways to try to scheme guys open and he just does not get open so if more can't do something then he, he's probably, you know, nobody's going to help him out. Um, 
And to me, I mean, to me, the biggest or the best move was potent was really the the uh, locking up Dickerson because if you look what some of those free agent guards are getting that aren't even as good as him, and he's only been in the league a couple of years, they save some um, money there. And obviously, they're going to try to restructure the defense more in what Fangio wants, which means Sweat is probably the odd man out because he's not really a, an outside edge rusher type; he's more of a hands down on the line. Um, so Huff will kind of you know move that out. And Johnson's not a perfect safety but he's a ball hawk and they missed that this year in the backfield so i agree with jason so far i'd say b plus um and really their only miss was mckinney who they were rumored to be interested in and they went hard but they weren't going to pay 17 million like green bay did so yeah the only the only, the only other point around the about barkley and the and the catching the ball is i mean that that comes down to, to hurts as well like you know you mentioned reed and they they design plays for Staley screens, for Westbrook screens. You watch today's offense, the better teams, they use the running back as a checkoff. Mahomes does it with Pacheco. I watched Stroud do it against the Blitz a bunch of times, throwing it to where it hurts that, you know, the Blitz was an issue, whether it wasn't getting picked up or whatever. But there was times where the running back and Wentz struggled with this too. That's instead of taking a sack or being second and 10, you throw to the running back, you pick up three or four yards. So. You know, I kind of come down to Hurts. So it don't matter who's your back, whether it's Swift, Barkley. If Hurts isn't making those plays, you're, it's going to be the same yeah. result. Now, maybe he has some more confidence in a guy like Barkley, um, like he does with A.J. Brown. So he starts to utilize it. But you, know, you want to see it. some more design stuff. Like if you remember, right, you the, I used to, that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I used to love like, like Clemente used to run that wheel route. They ran it like three times in the playoffs when they won the Super Bowl, like twice in the Super Bowl. That wheel route out of the backfield, boom, and you know he, get, he got 25, 30 yards on some of those big plays. And they just haven't had that that kind of play from the or, whether it's scheme or just hurts not checking down. You haven't seen it the last couple of years, so yeah. that's something that could open up the offense. Yeah, uh, and then I before have... before oh, go ahead, Jason. Uh, uh, you might be okay, go. You might be bringing. No, no, I it wasn't. I was going to ask about Huff. I had a question on Huff. Okay, so. hey, good. We'll no, I, I mean, I know he was kind of used situationally, right? In the Jets, he, he his snap count was he was effective in the snaps he played, but it wasn't like a high volume guy. Was there a particular reason he's used that way? Is he not? Is he only a, a late a late down ed, edge rusher? Maybe he's he just a specialist. He might yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't know. He, yeah, I don't. I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know. I really didn't know much about him until starting a reading when he was mentioned as a guy the Eagles would be interested in. Um, he's his run play supposedly improved this year, but it was definitely a weakness. And you know, some people are saying you know, a lot of his sacks were against backup tackles or like the quarterback fell down as he went by. But he's at, he actually. I don't his know if the whole league or just was like the highest. Ex- yeah, his pressure rate was really high, which Eagles weren't even getting that, you know, and just to, yeah, so nah, even, that, yeah, that's, I just, that'll know, be a big he's help. Not, um, he's not seeing the early downs, but a guy like Brandon Graham actually is good against the run. So he, yeah. you know, he potentially could. Jay, were you going to say something, Jason? Uh, I was going to ask what you guys think about the backup quarterback situation. Yeah, I know Fields has been floated around a bunch. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I'm Hurts, I would not want Fields coming in. Yeah, because... you know, you get you get into that territory, the Wentz and Hurts territory, the Wentz yeah, and Foles territory. You absolutely yeah, do. You know, and you want to say guys are mentally tough, but you just don't know. I mean, I, I, I agree. I don't know I if you want to not... open that can of worms. For a guy like Fields who could plug and play if Hurts were to get hurt, but is he like – I'd rather see like a Tannehill, somebody that – a proven starter who's a bad I heard I heard the other option was the stick from the Chargers. Oh. Easton stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had some stars. Yeah, teams. more will know him, obviously, That's coming true, from yeah. L.A. I, I mean, like, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, because you know, Mario is obviously gone. Guys like Brissett and Minshew who might outside chance of starting some on Brissett, actually, now that they traded Mac Jones, they'll, they'll draft a quarterback in New England. But, He's going to start, though, until the quarterback's um, ready to play. You know, Go so I, I don't even know who would be the ideal. You want a guy that's going to that has some starting experience. Yeah, I, think, I mean, you know, he, even though I mean, Hurts played not, every game this year, I but. mean, I, I, he's probably going to go back to the Forty ers but that Garoppolo would be a good backup, I think. Yeah, like um, they everybody's infatuated with like, oh, I need when your starter, go, you need a guy that can run that offense, or I need a mobile quarterback, a RPO. Yeah. I mean, he's your backup quarterback. You don't need a guy that can. He's not going to be able to run that out. That's her competent. You need him to be competent. Right. I would I'd I, have I, a, top, I, a guy. I'd like I, Garoppolo. I'd be fine with. I think. To be honest, I, I, I wasn't even thinking about him, him. But I would think it makes sense for him to go back to the 49ers. But 
But I, I would mean, stick. Away, I would stay away from Fields for that re- your reasons, Jason. Yeah, uh, it's not worth the risk reward. Isn't worth it to me. On yeah, fields. if I'm hurt, I, I I wouldn't want that. All right, quickly before we move the players, anything around the league that kind of stuck out to you? There's been guys flying around all over the place. Any any major deals that you said? Wow, this team real drastically improved. Obviously, like a Falcons getting Cousins, but but um, you know, any anything that that stood out to you, Jason? Uh, the Cousins, you know, I, just, I mean, they had probably the worst quarterback in the league, and they go to Cousins, who's, you know, average to above average. Uh, I would say above average quarterback. So, um, uh, you know, they have a lot of weapons there. Uh, if the offensive line is okay, I mean, they could they could make noise now in that division. Um, they're probably the favorite now to win that division. Um, any other moves? I mean, Henry, uh, how about how about you guys, Henry to the Ravens? Is he, I mean, that, I mean, that does he, give them another, like, you know. Isn't another, he 30? How old is he now? Yeah, I mean, and he's a, he's a. He's about that. And he's got and he a has lot one of now. He's that one, he's not. So he's getting beat up a lot. Yeah. Um, I does don't that, know. Th- does Aaron Rodgers retire and run for vice president count? That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> I have no um, idea. I I honestly and you were talking about you know the, the running back shift I I maybe they're changing their philosophy I was quite surprised that Dallas let Pollard go without dipping their toes in and getting one of the bigger names out there but so far so I don't Dallas think doesn't like sign free agents they they try to build through draft and they kind of sign no, guys but they I, might I be thought draft in the back maybe don't draft oh I'm sure they could I'm sure they yeah. would but they don't really have anything right now there and they're gonna no. you know you need a back and then McCarthy likes to run the ball on first down so you gotta have somebody in there so but my, uh, I get it. I'm sorry Chuck. no no I just, I just thought they would have taken maybe not Barkley but you know taking a uh, Henry or uh Mixon got traded for a seventh, seventh round. Yeah, ball. I didn't I mean, get. I didn't. Just, yeah, I didn't see. I didn't understand. Even Eckler didn't was, get like you know. He, guys yeah. Well, point. I guess Aaron is as Aaron just don't um, have a lot of value. They just don't. Anymore. Yeah. No, I, I mean, will Jim, say though, like I wouldn't use a high. You wouldn't use draft capital on a running back. That's for sure. And really, you should draft a quarterback. A uh, quarterback. A running back should get drafted. But in the Eagles' defense, they have no ability to draft a late running back that to be successful. Kansas City drafted Pacheco in what the whatever fifth, sixth, seventh round. Uh, I can go up and down teams who have made late draft picks on running backs. I've been the Eagles are not one of them. They got yeah. Gainwell. They not got Smallwood. I mean, obviously Westbrook, but yeah, yeah. but you're talking Westbrook, Westbrook, Westbrook was a yeah. second round pick. I think so he wasn't even that late. Second or third. Third. He was third. Might have right. been third. Yeah. He was third. But you're late. I'm thinking years. late. I'm thinking third day, fourth round or later. I don't later. even think that was Roseman, though, right? That was probably no, the case. no. That was Reed so if you and look at Banner Roseman, and, track record, yeah. Smallwood, Gainwell. You know, I can. There was a guy from Oregon that was supposed to be good, and the little guy that stunk. I can't remember his name. So, like, honestly, Cle- I mean, Clement was a free, an uh, undirected free agent, and he was by far your most productive guy coming out of that because he would be made some really big plays the year they won the Super Bowl. So, yeah. So, I think they had to sign a free agent, like they did with Swift. Like, in order for them to, to have that position, they needed a, a free agent. Um, and the running back, the, the money's cheap, and the the cap went up, so it's the perfect yeah. storm to. I was actually surprised because he's still not like a top three at 12 million a year, whatever the average would be cap funny money aside. He's still not even in top three, like average per years on the running backs. Yeah. But the 25 the cap- million guaranteed is that, is that more than like, I know the, the guarantee it's yeah. So McCaffrey's at like 16 or 17 and then it's um, Taylor and then it's somebody who's a bad contract. Yeah, I mean, to Jason's point, though, what Barkley's resume doesn't really say like he should get no. crazy money. I mean, he's the name is there, but he's been hurt. And he gets hurt he's, a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, was surpri- I was surprised yeah, that the, yeah. the Packers spent the money on Jacobs when they had Aaron Jones there. Uh, that surprised me a little bit, I guess. Um, and Tennessee, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. That we just we might not Tennessee even know. signed Ridley. Yeah, they wouldn't give they wouldn't give AJ Brown four years at a hundred million and uh, three years ago, and they're signing Ridley for almost that, and he's three or four years older than AJ Brown. But yeah, I mean they need a weapon, but obviously that that's just poor playing from a previous regime because everybody that made those decisions are now yeah I was without say, a job. They got fired anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, and uh, uh, last thing is Carolina's uh, Carolina's owner this is might 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 be the worst owner in the league now that Dan Snyder is is gone. Uh, he he messes too much, and he's you know they spend some money. Maybe they'll get a little better, but 
he uh, he somebody. seems Who to be meddling way too much. Agent? Didn't they get a big free agent? They got a guard. They got a, they got someone on the line that's gonna be pretty good. But then they yeah. traded they traded their they traded Burns to the Giants. Oh yeah. Who yeah. they could have got two first round picks for him last year, and the owner said, No, no, we're not trading them. We're gonna be good this year, and they weren't. And they traded their first round pick away this year, and they got a second and a fifth for Burns. So yeah. Yeah, that Burns was a good pickup by the Giants. I mean, that was actually mm-hmm. a real good move for them. They're gonna have a real good. They're gonna have a real real good pass rush. They got yeah, three quality pass rushers minutes. on that line. How about Minnesota signing Darnold for? quarterback that's yeah now there's reports that jefferson already declined the contract with them so he's he'll be asking to get out quit pretty quickly i would think yeah yeah all right let's move to the players we don't want to spend all day we have plenty of time to talk more free agency we're gonna uh before we get into the players we're gonna do a draft we always do the draft first before we kick off the uh talk around so we don't give it away so like i said it's our our if you've listened before, our snake draft, we got six guys. One guy gets cut, best cumulative score. You missed the cut. There's all kind of ramifications. So off camera, we did do a draft order, and it goes Chalky, Tommy, Jason, and snake order. So uh, I think, Chalky, you're up first if you want to kick us off. All right, I will do that. Uh, Victor Hovland. I'm I'm sorry. I spelled Scheffler wrong. You, did you spell it Hovland? H O V L A N D. Okay. Well, sorry, Some, Jason. Somebody but I'm had something take, fall into his lap. I'm going to take Scheffler. Like, okay. Now, winner doesn't matter. It is cute. No, it I mean, That's true, but. Well, I got back to back, so I'm going to take Will Zaltoris, and I'm going to take Hideki Matsuyama. So, so my expectation was not to take. Uh, Scheffler was to take Zal Torres, so <laughs> Jason, you got Zal Torres. Um, I'm actually going to go with JT, Justin Thomas. Okay. Yeah, Zal Torres would have been three or four for me. Uh, That's you, Charlie. You're back to back. Yeah, yeah, Charlie's yeah too. I'm looking. Um, I guess I'll take Morikawa and... You took Matsuyama, right, Jason? Yes. Uh, I'll take Xander, I guess. Yeah, that was a guy that I don't like. I hate to win, but in a play. In yeah, that it's, he wasn't a first round pick for me, but in the third, I'll take it. I mean, I don't know how I can't not do it. I got to take Rory. Okay. All right. Back to back, Jay. Yeah, I'll take Wyndham Clark. Ugh, I love him. And I'm going to take Max Homa. Also would have been my pick. So you took both guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going to take, uh, is it Alberg? Yep, Oberg. Oh, I like how he's been playing. I'll stick with Ludwig. him. Ludwig. And Chalky's got two. Uh, I'll take Burns and Spieth. Um, uh, give me the guy that can't play a fourth round, but he can play three rounds. Shane Lowry. That is true. All right, so I guess I have two here. Um, I'm gonna go Figala. Another another top ten like loves the top ten, top fifteen. And then um. I'm going to do a guy who's going to be prominent when we talk picks. I'll do Tom Hoagie. Hoagie. Philly's own Hoagie. Um, uh, so it's between, I got it between two guys here. And I'm going to take Henley. Chalky well, last pick. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting paid out with the odds here, so I'm going to stay away from my longer shots for now. Uh, I'll go Tommy Fleetwood. That was my between the two guys was Fleetwood. Yeah. Only. All right. So then, uh, so that be it. with Chalky. Chalky's got Hovland. And um, more Kyla. More, more Kyla and Shoffley. Yep. 
Burns and Spieth. Burns, Spieth, Fleetwood. Burns, Spieth, Fleetwood, Tommy. I got uh, Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, Rory McIlroy. Scheffler. Ludwig um, Goldberg. uh, Shane Lowry and Henley. It's not done. Lowry, Henley. Okay, I have uh, Zal Torres, Matsuyama, Clark, Homa, um, Thigala, and Hoagie. All right, so uh, we get to keep our top five guys. Um, if by chance multiple guys miss a cut, um, you will get the score of the golf the worst the worst the score cut. of the golfer that makes the cut makes a cut. You know what I mean? Like if some golfer finishes yeah. plus fifteen, so if you miss a cut, you're in trouble. You need everybody. Yeah, if you miss one cut. Because you're dropping, but if you miss drop. two cuts, Dude, you're that's where you're in trouble. Yeah. Or so well, so the, the second guy is either his actual score, if it's really bad, or the low, uh, a shot more than no, the No, no, no. If your guy the makes cut. the cut, it's his score. No, no, no. I'm saying if you have two guys that miss the cut, right. which means one of the, one of them has to be one of your five, it's the worst of their they actual make, score. Like if they shoot plus 30, they correct. get that. Or if they made if the, the cut, yeah. but then they if, shot, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm saying he doesn't make the cut. If you have two guys that don't make the cut, well, I would get, still say it would be the score of the last, like the the worst guy who made the cut. Yeah, you get yes. that score. But because if this, you cannot, you cannot make the cut with a plus six, and then somebody could blow up and have a no, plus no. Six. I I agree. That's why I'm saying it should be the worst of the two. If you shot, if you shoot a plus fifteen, and, and that's worse than anybody that makes the cut. That should be your score. No, because you're not playing eighteen. You're not playing seventy-two holes. You can't. Well, that's your penalty. That's your penalty for not playing seventy-two. You're not nah. going to benefit by having a batter. That's why we did it last year. No, we have. All right, the worst it, guy don't the cut. it don't matter. It don't matter. But but I you could actually you could actually improve your score by not making the cut. Then is what I'm saying. If you have two hard, if you shoot if you, if you shoot yeah, ten over for two only rounds, playing thirty-six holes. You're not playing the next the next 36 holes. No, but I'm saying if your guy shoots 10 over two days in a row and he's plus 20, and the worst guy that makes the cut shoots a plus 15, your guy is now plus 16, not plus 20. And it's a benefit yeah, to have missed the cut. We're going to prorate the last two rounds? Because you don't have uh, no, an actual score for the last two rounds. It's no, cumulative it was, score. It's it, was the worst of the, it, was the, it was the worst of the two. That's the yeah, way we our, scored our, it last year. Our thing is I'm, score. We, we, like can, we can change it. I'm saying that's the way we scored it last year. We can change it. It's fine. I would have to listen back. I don't think so. Who cares? I'm going to have four guys miss the cut. It's fine. Nah. I think because we got the top 18 guys, like, <laughs> yeah. honestly, like, if if two of your guys miss the cut, then you're, you yeah, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Because, yeah. You know. Unless you get an guys. injury withdrawal. We had somebody, I don't know if he was drafted, somebody was withdrew, withdrew at the, uh, was it the Masters last year? One of the the majors, one of the guys that we wanted, we like to win with Drew at the in the in the yeah. driving yeah. range. Yeah, I think it was. Might have been Zalatoris. Yeah, that's, yeah. Was. that's right because he wasn't and then healthy. He had the back, yeah. and then he got hurt with the back. So yeah. yeah. All right, let's kick this off now. It is the Players Championship, the fiftieth anniversary of the Players Championship, I believe. Uh, started sounds, in nineteen seventy four. Right. Considered the fifth major by a lot. Um, Mainly because it probably showcases the top 50 golfers, outside of not counting the live guys, um, and it's got probably one of the largest purses of a non-major. It might be the largest purse of a non-major. Um, I got some stats, but I know Jason has a lot of stats and facts. So I'm going to kick it over to him to kind of give us a rundown. I actually think it's the largest purse, even more than all the majors. Oh, it is. is. I know at one time so. it was. I thought there was something. Yeah, there. yeah. yeah. All right, so it's uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll just run down these in no particular order, but seventeen the seventy-two hole winning score uh, odds are are uh, two seventy-two and a half is the over under on the, the the score, which would equate to since it's a par seventy-two uh, course, they're thinking the the over under is minus fifteen and a half for yeah, the winner. What is the uh did you see weather? We expect it yes. for 
Yep, cool. I'm going to get to that. I have that. Um, I'll go right to that now. There's, like, chance of a thunderstorm, I think, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but the wind should not be a problem. But if it rains, you know, it it could affect things because then things could, you know, be slower. That's um, where that's where sometimes if you played early and it was dry, yeah, I hate it that. rains and the yeah. later guys have a big advantage with their yeah. softness. Um, so everybody knows the 17th hole is that, you know, signature hole. The over under of balls in the water for the whole tournament is fifty three and a half. Wow. For that for that hole. That's cool. Uh yeah. Um iron play is very important on this course because it's not a long course. It's only seven thousand two hundred seventy five yards. Um the top sixty five will make the cut um out of hundred and forty four golfers. Um there's ninety two bunkers, sixteen water holes, and that's the most on the tour. Uh, 16 water holes no consecutive holes play in the same direction which is kind of weird um the fairways are ryegrass the greens are poa trevelius um the par 5 average is only 545 yards so you you could you can make up some ground on the, on the par 5s yeah you know, one thing i read distance. is that in most tournaments it's this you prefer distance over accuracy but this one mm -hmm. is accuracy and angles it's a lot about playing an angle for yep. your next shot yeah distance is not not a big factor here uh the 17th hole double bogey rate is 8% um so that that's going to be something to watch and 25 out of the last 25 winners have all made the cut in the previous tournament that they played. Um, I'll just run down the top five finishers in 2023 and 2022. Uh, Scheffler won last year, followed by Hatton, Hoagie, Hovland, Matsuyama. 2022 is Cam Smith, um, who's obviously not playing. Um, and then if I could read my writing. Oh, some guy named Lahiri finished second. Um, Paul Casey, uh, Kisner, and... Um, Good luck. I can't read. Oh, Keegan Bradley got fifth. And then the just real quick, the, the winners of 2021 were Justin Thomas. Uh, There's no uh, tournament in 2020. T uh, 2019 was McElroy. 2018, Webb Simpson. 2017 uh, was Siwoo Kim. 2016 was Jason Day. And 2015 was Fowler. Ricky Fowler. So is everybody playing from in this tournament? That I don't know it? about Webb Simpson. Uh, but no, the I, other think guys he, I think I uh, think is Webb in. I thought I saw him. I'm not sure. Uh, Lahiri, I'm not sure about. Uh, Casey and Smith are obviously yeah. live guys now, uh, so they won't be in it. Um, and Casey as well. Um, but uh, you know the uh, the other the other guys should all be playing. DraftKings well, does have Webb Simpson listed, so I'm assuming that they did, so right? Well. I thought I saw. Yeah, except I did, I, expect him to play. Yep. I did see that. Um, one, um, I did see though where you mentioned fair um, accuracy. Where in past tournaments, guys, the winners have not been in the top ten in fairways hit for the for the round. So it's probably accuracy. I, I'm t I'm telling you, I heard I read a lot about angles. So it's kind of where your yeah. second shot is to the green. Um, you know, obviously, if you're way off, it's different, but. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll go through our golfers. I just had we'll start we'll kick it off with, um, you know, last week Scotty Scheffler finally found his putter. Me and Jason were talking. He was I think thirty eighth to round one, twenty something round two, tenth round three, and then I might have been first in the final round for putting. Um, he did change putters. He has a blade putter now, so uh, it's shocking that if this is the reason why his putting increased that it took him this long um, as he went. I mean, what, what was the last tournament he won? It was, uh, was it this one? Did he win after this? I can't remember. Uh, I'm not sure if he won after this. Like, yeah, so, so it, was been, it was a while. Sure. Um, so, and putting is the reason why. And he found it last week and he dominated. He won going away. Uh, Jason, you know, we're going to get in the guys, but let's stick with Scotty. Is he, is it his tournament? Obviously, it's his tournament to lose, but is it his tournament to lose? Oh, I, t I totally think so. I mean, I think if if his putter is anything like it was last week. Oh, that's he, over. It's over. He it's could like go last on a run, over. but not only for this tournament. He could go on a run like Tiger Woods used to go on. I mean, he's that good. Um, 
and this would only be the start of it, um, I totally think, you know, he is my top choice to win this tournament. I mean, hands down. Um, I think everybody's playing for second if his putter's anywhere near it was last week. Yeah, it's crazy, too. I was I watched last week's the they, – they did the slow-mo of his swing, and they always concentrate on his feet when they do a swing. His – his feet when he swings is insane how he doesn't like break his I don't know how he hits the ball how he like that it's great like you would never yeah. teach somebody to do that yeah he seems to be off balance it's insane like his feet are off the ground at one point it seems like but uh I mean you can't argue with his ball striking he's, well it's he's like never... back in the day with Furick. I mean remember that swing like... yeah yeah and... but you know I I don't know if you, I would say Furick. a lot of his was in his back swing like the you know the the swing itself, where Scheffler's is in his feet. Which footwork, you would, yeah. Yeah, where you think, like, somebody with bad footwork. Furyk used to be tough to play with in Tiger Woods because you get a time to swing with the up yeah, and down. I, and I used to play with him a lot, like, a, but it was just tough because it's it's very yeah, unorthodox. Hitch. Yeah, how about you, Chucky? Scott, I know you went with Hovland. And you can get so I went with Hovland, and look, if if um, if um Scheffler is – I'm, I'm betting that Scheffler gets the putting – Right at some point this year, I'm gonna bet on him being a little inconsistent at the start of the season as he as he tweaks and and but you know look he he was lights out last week. Um, the other reason I, I took Hovland first, Hovland will be one of the winners I give out obviously, but I was I was one to pick a winner and uh, in the history of the tournament, there's never been a back to back winner. So all the years of Jack Tiger, all the greats, um, nobody's won it back to back. And it's been at different courses. It's been different times of the year, it, but it just hasn't happened. So I was going to, with, his, you know, uh, the favorite, he'll he'll do well. But I, I you know, I, I went with Hovland there. And Hovland um, has back-to-back top 10 finishes. And like Jason said, he was top three uh, last year. Um, so uh, he struggled a little bit this year, um, even after taking the FedEx. Um, but he's going to he's gonna be... Um, the guy I like over Scheffler, but I mean, Scheffler could easily pick up two majors in another big tournament or two, uh, even if the putting just improves a little bit. And if he really, really improves it, then it's hard to do the grand slam, but he's going to be very, very tough to beat. Yeah. One thing I saw, one thing interesting with Scheffler too is, and, and you know, you, you don't want to take these odds necessarily on a straight bit, but maybe mixing them. He was like minus 140 for top 10, which seems... That I think is easy money. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, like I said, you might not want to just bet one minus one forty, but if you throw it in with a parlay with something else, I mean, that's pretty pretty sweet. I, I thought I was I was a little surprised. Now plus one forty for top five, a little bit tougher. Um, obviously, if you think he's going to win, but yeah, I just thought that was a little interesting. Um, and I was saying to Jason, this was the tenth tournament this year, and it's the first time the favorite won, and he was seven to one last week. Um, so you would be looking at back-to-back favorites. Obviously, it's Scheffler. Yeah. So some of the, how many some of the how art. many of those has he played? Because he's pretty much gonna be the favorite no, no matter what. But has he played? Yeah, the I don't think slate? he played in Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Pebble Beach that got canceled after 54. I don't know where he was and exactly. Um, yeah, I, I didn't pull up that, but yeah, I mean, I have I didn't write down all of them. I know he's you know he's played in. I should probably look at that while we talk, but. Yeah, PGA uh, Tour results. We'll have that. But all right, with um, Jason. So I'll give it back to you. We talked about Scheffler uh, before. We always will throw out long shots. Do you want to? Do you want to do? Get into some long shots. Or you want to just go at it with your guys and then talk about our long shots. You you, you make the call on. Yeah, um, I mean, I think I'll just I'll just give you my wing candidates and and then um, a bomb. And then you could come back to me with your, you know, right. what other bets I yep. have. And I have the odds. If you, I have top five, top ten yeah. winner if you haven't written stuff down. So, obviously, my top pick is Scheffler. Now, if you go to DraftKings, they offer a plus 300 um, odds. Um, so, I actually got him a plus 850. Oh, um, 300 in addition. Yes, yeah, so it's 550. In addition. Okay, so, he was 550. And I got, you know, I did the bet to give him uh, 300. So, I thought that was good. Um, and then my top two choices in the draft, uh, Matsuyama, 40 to 1. Um, he's really uh, he's really been on his game so far this year. He does have a little bit of a back issue, which is scary, but 
Uh, he yeah, he fell out. apart in the final round last week. Yeah, but he's in like he's in there for every tournament. Like he's uh, in and, the run, and then you know? the tournament before that, he just he won insane yeah. when yeah. it was the tie when yeah. there was like seven guys tied for lead, and then he just went crazy. Yeah, and then Zal Torres, uh, my other pick. Um, he's he's back, man. He's he looks really good. Um, he's been in the running in almost every tournament he's been in this year. Um, uh, he's primed for a win. So I got him a 33 to 1. Um, these two were on FanDuel. Um, and he finished 20th, I believe, in 2022 in this tournament. Uh, Matsuyama finished yeah, he was a last T4, year. He was a T4 last week at the Ar- Arnie Palmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was in it. I think he had like a four stroke lead on Saturday, and then he fell. Yeah, apart. you know what? One thing with Zal Torres, though, is like in that final he round, he and chokes. he doesn't necessarily just choke. He doesn't he doesn't score like he'll shoot par he'll shoot yeah. one under but he doesn't stay on pace with four under five yeah. you know he doesn't knock out birdie after birdie at time and and that's where yeah. you know I think Scheffler bypassed him and even Henley bypassed him yeah. last week and then my fourth pick is Hoagie um seventy five to one I got on Fanduel I mean look look at what he's done in like in tournaments this year like he is. A top twenty machine. Yeah, he is around. number one in uh, uh, sh- uh, shots gained to approach for so. the last thirty six rounds. I read that. Um, so he's number last thirty six round. He's at, he's number one in NSGA. Yep, um, and he finished fifth here last year, or finished third here last year, twenty twenty three. So he obviously likes the course. Um, my bomb is is Gim at one twenty to one. I got on Fanduel. Um, he I saw also, him. I know nothing about him. Okay, so if, look at his last five. I think he. I think he played in six tournaments this year. The first two he missed a cut. The last four he's been like top twenty-five, and he finished sixth here in twenty twenty-two. So one hundred and twenty to one. I mean, I'm definitely yeah. going to throw him in for top twenties and all. But like yeah. for, for one hundred twenty to one. So here's what he finished his last four tournaments: thirteenth, twelfth, fifth, and sixteenth. <laughs> So 13th, 12th, 5th, and 16th in the last four tournaments he played this year. I mean, the guy's on his game, and he likes it here. I'll take a shot. Yeah. All right. How about uh, Chalky for you two? Guys just flat out kind of win candidates. So, yeah, three win candidates for me. Hovland, obviously, 25-1 to 1 right now on DraftKings. Uh, second, Zal Torres, 28-1 for pretty much everything Jason said. And also... For the reasons Jason said, Hoagie. Um, go go uh, go on FanDuel for those two guys. You'll get better okay. odds talking to Jeff. You know, and Hoagie wasn't somebody I read. I was reading some things, and I listened to Beast a little bit, and that really piqued my interest in Hoagie because I know some guys there liked him too. And then I read some stuff on ESPN that backed up with, with the stats are you know what Jason just gave out, but um because of their. And Jason, you probably just heard this too, I'm sure, because of it being 16 out of 18 water halls, the variance. Uh, is greater at this tournament than just about any other. So you can see so guys that have good scramble stats as opposed to like the long drives and everything, like you were saying, Tom, do better here um, because you have to, you know, it's not about hitting it long. It's about avoiding some of the trouble. So, um, but uh, I think the, um, like the average is like either like you can, it, it's the highest birdie average and the highest bogey average or something like that. I, I forget yeah, the exact. Well, I should have wrote it down. Especially par threes with water. I mean, yeah. you put in the water, you, you're guaranteed a bogey, you know, yeah. and chances are you're probably looking at a double bogey. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, like, this, it, it, it's harder to handicap this tournament and some, and then, like, say the Masters or some of the other ones because it's not, the repetition isn't necessarily there year over year. Yeah, I like tournaments like this too because your your guys aren't you know the leader just takes that one hole like he has that one water hole and he he loses two shots and it's so it's kind of keeps you juice. I mean, last uh, week Arnie Scheffler just ran away with it. It was over yeah. by hole four yeah. or five. The other thing about Hoagie was he set a single round course record in this tournament last year at ten under. So oh wow, I didn't know that. He only yeah, he finished third, but he had a ten under third round. So. Cool. Can play. Right. I'm gonna. I'll give out three guys, and I have, and then two other guys who are not, who I think were not long shots, though. But, but my three main guys were Scott Scheffler, beat it to death. Justin Thomas, who I actually picked. I mean, I thought I felt like he's coming into form. He's 
he came out uh, fourth round at the Arnie last week with like he was three under through five. Then he had a couple bad holes and he just couldn't really get it back. But you can see he's starting to get that swing back, his form back. Um, he could be sitting on a big effort. And Zal Torres was the other guy. I mean, he's a top ten machine. Um, he's a you know if I if I look at his number, he's twenty eight plus twenty eight hundred, but he's plus six hundred for top five and plus three twenty for top ten. I mean, that's you want to do parlays throwing top ten. That's that's great to me. And then two guys that are just sitting outside, not crazy, crazy long side. Henley, who I drafted. I mean, he's got a good putter. He's always going to be in it. He had a great fourth round in Arnie. And Wyndham Clark. Um, he was a guy, actually, I thought this, and me and Jason were talking, I thought he was better when I, from watching the tournament. Then when I actually looked at his numbers, there's only been real two real tournaments. The one he won that was shortened by weather. Um, last week, obviously... Well, he got second, and I thought he had another one, but it was he was forty first in the Phoenix Open. But I do think he was top, his first three rounds. He was right there. I think he had some yeah. hiccup somewhere. If I yeah, remember. he's a guy who's he's definitely live for all the, the uh, yeah. The and I keep thinking he's gonna blow up. He's not, but he keeps just no, like, he's for real. He's yeah, for he's real. for real. And he's a guy I've seen him hit many bad shots and then come out on a par three. Or, and just stick it right, like to make up for for it. So they're yeah. they're my top three, two kind of additional guys um, to throw out. I have some long shots, and I know Jason. So we'll go back to you, Jason. We'll go pack. We'll go to the long shots now. These are always fun. I mean, and keep in mind, if you, I don't have the numbers, but there's been tournaments this year where guys are plus over ten thousand are winning these tournaments. Yeah. You know, so they're live with these guys and live now. Yeah, you can see that the best golfers are probably over there. That at yeah. all these tournaments are, are wide open. Yeah, so um, I'll give you my top 20 guys. Um, obviously, all the guys I said that would win, I'm going to bet top 20, except Scheffler. I'm not betting him top 20. That's Yeah, hit, that's got to be bad. Yeah, I'm not betting that. Um, so, Homa, um, you know, he's, obvi- he's plus. He's actually plus money to get top 20. So, anybody that's plus, I, I always bet. Um, Connors, Corey Connors. Um, uh, is plus money. Uh, Henley, like Tommy said, I like Henley as well to uh, to, to finish top 20. And then Keegan Bradley, um, who I said finished fifth here uh, in 2022. Um, he was like plus three something to get top 20. And then um, do you want me to save my make the cut guy until we we actually put that bet together? Yeah, like yeah. Later cause, in the show? I, yeah. Uh, um, so, so your top, top – that's top – did you have a long shot winner as well? or they? Well, those guys I'm going to bet to win too. Yeah. Um, like smaller bets. So there would be my long shot long win. But, most, okay. but but for the most part, I'm top 20. Keep the stick guys. to top 20. How about yeah. you, Chalky? I mean, I'm not betting anybody else winning the three I mentioned. So Hoagie at 70 to 1 would be the long shot winner if you yeah, want I mean, to call that. Yeah, I mean, that is a long shot. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, everybody I drafted plus Morikawa – uh, no, I did more cow. I'm sorry. Matsuyama uh, would be top 10 plays for me. Um, those are all at DraftKings plus 210 or better right now. Um, and then two longer shots I have for top 20. A couple of young kids. Brandon Wu is uh, plus 900 and Nick Dunlap is plus uh, 1000. So uh, they're young, but uh, for top 20, if you get one of them in there, I think Wu finished in the top. Wu finished nineteenth last year in his first time playing. So, plus nine hundred, and then plus a uh, thousand on Dunlap, who just won for the first first uh, amateur. I think to win a tour for he won the Amex in a while. So, two longer shots to get in the top twenty. All right, yeah, and I have two two guys for that I potential win candidates as absolute bombs, and then obviously relative to top twenty, the you know top ten whatever. Mitchell is one of them. I mean, he, these are guys, as I kept looking, they keep they pop up on all the shots gained, whether it's tee to green, off the tee, approach. Um, Mitchell has two top tens, one in the uh, PJ what's it, Cognizant, the PJ National. He was T9. And earlier in the year in the American Express, he was T9. Um, and Novak is another one. He's another shots gained guy. He, was, um, he has three top tens. PGA, he was T9 in PGA. Um, national. He was T8 in Mexico. Now, that tournament was kind of iffy. And he was T8 in Farmers Insurance. So, you know, I, 
they probably don't win, but Mitchell's plus ten thousand and Novak is plus twenty five thousand. So you know, you don't you don't know, but uh, top twenty for sure. And then two guys that I've been keeping my eye on all year. Um, Henry English is one of them, or Harry English, whatever. Uh, Harry English. Har- he was doing very well, and he fell apart after a double bogey at Arnie last week in the final round. And Luke List, who was second in yeah. Mexico, um, and he didn't really do too much in the Arnie and the, in the Cognizant. But there are two other guys for top twenty. They they might even end up being a, a make the cut for me, um, as as we discussed. But they were my my long shot guys that I've been keeping an eye on. Um, another guy that's probably safe to say, and, and Chalky drafted him for like a top ten, top twenty. Is Xander Shoffley? He's a, he's another one yeah. that like just scores and don't win. Yeah, he, he don't scores. win. Yeah. He don't win, but he'll be on Sunday. He'll be right there, and the yeah. channel ten will be have rooting him on, and he'll finish fourth or fifth like he always does. Yeah. Uh, all right. What um you want to? Is it just to make the cut, guys? You got any? I well, mean, why don't we do this? Why don't we all do our make the cut, guys? I'll plug it in, and then we'll just assume. You know, we'll have to wait for Kevin's pick, but like we'll just take a a guy around those and see what the, what it might, you know, what it might come to, like what the odds okay. might be, you know? Okay. So, uh, I'll start out and my guy's going to be Hoagie. Um, you know what, like we talked about, um, I think he's a lock to be top, uh, to make the cut and he's minus two forty five, not great odds, but you know, a four, a four man parlay like this, um, you know, we'll see what you guys have and see, see what it comes to, but I, I'm, I'm going to stick with Hoagie. All right, Jason. I mean, uh, Chalky. What side are you on, Jay? DraftKings. Okay. Because my, two, my two top 20 long shots aren't coming up to make the cut. I, it seems like they don't have the whole roster on that. Uh, yeah, they, they don't. Uh, who, there's, there's, no, like, there's, no plus, there's no plus players, I think. They're all like uh, everybody they have listed to, to make it is like minus 150. Correct. Right, yeah. yeah. Gim is like the longest shot, minus yeah. 150. Um, who, was your, right. who was your guy you were looking for? I would have went either... Uh, probably I would say Dunlap, but um, uh, Ho- Hoagie was I think my longest shot. Uh, well, let me go to ones. let me go to Fanduel and see uh, and see if they list anybody here. Let's see. Yeah, you could keep talking. Yeah, I just did. I mean, I if there's four of us, we can go a little chalkier. But uh, I was looking for something closer to even money or not like minus one fifty. Yeah, at least, I, I but. think. Yeah, I think like it'll pay. So like I wouldn't go crazy. Yeah, so if we're doing DraftKings, Jason, you could throw you could throw Thagala in for me. Uh let me let me just check this for Chalky. So if I go to FanDuel and see if they have a make the cut. Now Chalky, a lot just of them throw, don't have make the cut. Just to throw it out there, it is your holiday coming up. Make miss cut. Fitzpatrick is uh minus one eighty to make it. You know, St. Patty's, your holiday, mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick. Might be a guy yeah, I, I passed on. I passed on picking him though. I <laughs> yeah, think. Fanduel only goes down to minus one thirty eight too. Yeah, so we'll all right. So stick, let's just um, stick to DraftKings. So you're gonna say yeah? Tegel. Can you imagine the week it, like half of half of the Irish in the city between St. Patrick's Day and the Eagles signing a Penn State player? Like it's gonna be a hell of a week. Find a, find a couple of them lying in the streets. Um, all right, so make the cut. Uh, Fleetwood's probably the longest other one. He's minus three twenty. God damn it. So Th- Figuero was also minus two forty five. Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking at. Uh... Oh, you know what, uh, Jason? Give me English. He's minus one sixty five. I didn't even see he was on there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Fitzpatrick's minus one eighty. Uh, yeah, I drafted uh, Fitzpatrick. No, I, I didn't draft Fitzpatrick. No, you didn't draft Fitzpatrick. I drafted I Fleetwood. Draft. Uh, you know what? I I'd, I'd like Connors to make the cut. He's minus two twenty. Corey Connors. Yeah. All right. So say say. Just say Kevin takes the gala. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, just as a placeholder. Yep, yep. Um, a hundred dollar bet would pay four sixty three. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not still, bad at all. No, it's almost four to one still. Yeah, that's not bad. So yeah, read those the, guys off though, Jason. Minus Kevin. So I have I have Hoagie minus two forty five. Uh, Chalky has Connors minus two twenty, and Tommy has English minus one sixty five. So you just have to get uh, Kevin's pick. Okay, all right. Any uh, anything else before we uh, wrap this bad boy up? I think um, um, 
I mean, that's pretty much it, right? We gave out we gave out some winners. We we talked Scheffler, um, kind of a kind of a kickoff for the PGA season. We have Masters. Um, Jason, you figured out Masters is the week after our hundredth episode. Should be it should be episode one hundred and one, I believe. So we'll have more for the Masters episode one hundred and one. We got the Phillies ready to kick off the season, so I'm sure we will have some uh, Phillies talk shortly. As they are start beginning to wrap up spring trading, uh, I guess still a couple more weeks. I'd, I'd like to rescind my Yankees picks uh, now that Cole is. Uh, Did you see the, the Padres got Cease. Cease, too, yeah. Too. I thought, well, Yankees still might sign one of their two guys to get desperate, but. All right. Well, episode 97 of Broad Street Hustle. We'll be back next week, probably at a regular day of Thursday. We did record a day earlier because the golf does start on Thursday. So hopefully you're listening before to get some plays in. Have a great night.